Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Wonder Snatch. Today is another installment of my Dermatology and Drag series and today I think I will be talking about Dermatology and skin of colour. There's been a couple of articles lately pointing to the lack of diversity in dermatology images and how it affects brown and black people. And because red looks a little bit purple in skin of colour, I'm going to turn myself all purple today by doing a tribute to Juno Birch, alright? Just going to get these brows out of the way, put on my face tapes and take off this shirt. <laughs> Okay, today's gonna get a bit messy, so I have the shirt is off and my sideburns are growing in too, so that's um, glued down as well and I've got my face tapes on. I'm, I'm gonna try to use as many... Oh, it's raining. If you hear anything, that's rain. Um, I'm gonna try to use as much black-owned beauty brands as I can and I'll flag it up there that it's black-owned. I've mixed some of my Makeup Forever palette, the pink, blue and white, to get this lavender colour. Okay? When you're trying to paint yourself a different colour, you've got to be very careful with your powders, okay? Because sometimes a neutral set or something with a little bit of colour turns everything muddy immediately. So, I've, um, that's happened to me several times. Okay, so let's try to publify myself. Okay, hopefully this works. Lilac. So people of colour are really underserved by dermatologists, okay? In textbooks, the majority of pictures of skin conditions are all white people. I think across um, textbooks they've looked and 20%, sometimes only about 5% of pictures are of people of colour. And most of the time, those are the STD pictures, so like syphilis or you know penile discharges and warts and stuff like that. Which is um, obviously quite racist. And even in, during COVID, some dermatologists have been trying to uh, set up a COVID skin registry. At the time when I recorded this, out of 700 submissions, only 13 are on black skin. Okay, I'm going to use this big blender by Real Techniques. I had this for a while, meant for this kind of body paint. If people don't learn to identify rashes and skin conditions on dark skin, they'll just miss it. Okay, because uh, rashes can look very different on coloured skin. Check this one nicely blended. It's so bad that um, a medical student had to start his own handbook for black and brown skin in dermatology, and it's free online, so I'll link it down below. And uh, one of his stay home moms just started this Instagram account called Brown Skin Matters, and that has kind of blown up. And it's used as a resource by a lot of dermatologists and, you know, doctors, because the textbooks are just not enough. Let's go ahead and highlight. I'm just trying to make sure the center of the face is highlighted. If you're using Meron, make sure that those brows are covered too. Quickly set that. Yeah, so Juno Birch is a very famous queen from Manchester. She's got this very uh, iconic look where she um, is basically this pastel alien housewife all the time. She's even done Trixie Mattel's makeup once. Okay, and now kimchi no colour. Remember, we don't want to mess up this purple with any hint of colour. So, people of colour are not just um, disadvantaged just from textbooks alone, okay? So I just need to make that clear that people of colour are systemically, you know, um, underserved by the healthcare profession. Black and brown people usually have less access to medical care and it's harder for them to get insurance. So you know, dermatologists who in America most of them are privately run, their insurance might not cover, you know, some people who are in need. Yes. Okay, I'm going to be using a brand new brush today to brush this off just to make sure I don't, you know, mix up my powders from last time because those are not washed and might contain, you know, some tan or normal skin colour. So now I'm a violet, violet charge key. <laughs> okay, let's put on these face tapes. Facelift done. And now I will be going in with my Coloured Rain palette. There's a nice roll of purples there that I can use to contour and for my eyes as well. 
This is black owned. So we're gonna contour first with the shade Pup Smurf. Remember the purple Smurfs used to be uh, standing for zombies. Okay, I'm gonna use this to contour. Okay, and you know when people of color do end up seeing a doctor, they're usually taken less seriously when they complain of pain because um, doctors seem to think that, you know, people of color can tolerate more pain. So they are usually treated less well and they're undertreated. Okay, they don't get as much painkillers, they don't get as much treatment as white people. Okay, I'm using a very, very soft synthetic brush. It doesn't overpower the purple. Okay, just make sure everything's nice and light. So you can't blame people of color when they have such little trust in the medical establishment. Okay, not only now, but historically as well. We have to know that in history, people of color have been exploited by doctors and scientists. Okay, a very common example is the HeLa cells. Okay, HeLa cells are basically these cells that are used in everything from making drugs, making vaccines, and they come from this woman called Henrietta Lacks. And she had cervical cancer, okay, and her cells were harvested by a doctor, well-meaning at the time, without her consent, okay, and, and sent to all, to all the laboratories all over the world. And only recently that her family knew that their great-grandmother or grandmother has, you know, parts of her living in, living in laboratories all over the world. And we can't forget also the Tuskegee experiment when doctors were studying syphilis, okay? They recruited a whole bunch of black men who had syphilis, told them they're getting treated but didn't treat them and just followed them up for many years and watched them get all sorts of complications from syphilis. It was a horrific experiment. I mean, it really taught us a lot about syphilis but it was so unethical the way it was done. Okay, let's go into the eyes. Okay, she's got very um, thin brows. I hate thin brows, very difficult. They're usually black, but this black makeup forever pencil. Let me try to sketch out these Juno Birch brows. Ah! Something like that. I'm just gonna use some black eyeshadow to try to see the thing. Clean it up with a little bit of white. I need to use my trusty old clown white for this. Alright. Blend that down a little bit. Set that with some sugar pill taco. You know, moving forward, the lack of diversity in dermatology images will, will also lead to disadvantages in the future because right now we're using these images to train machine learning algorithms to recognize diseases. So if you're trained on all white images, you don't recognize the black ones. Sometimes in these facial recognition software and in um, these algorithms, when you look at a picture of dark skin, you just think that the lighting is bad and tell, tell them to change the lighting. It's a problem that I think people need to know. And when scientists and dermatologists are not aware or are willfully ignorant about this, these things are very easily overlooked. Okay, let's go into the eyes. So the eyes are really simple, okay? Just, uh, just a simple crease, okay? And, but very, very nice and tight. I'm gonna do a pack on the color. So I'm using the Colored Rain palette. Start with Vibes. I'm just pack that into the crease. This is one of the best rainbow palettes out there. Look at that. And bring it under. Okay, so examples of how dermatology can look completely different on, on skin of color is let's start with the easiest thing, eczema. Okay, eczema is just red and inflamed. And on white skin, it just looks red and inflamed. But in darker skin, it can present in a, a whole bunch of different ways. For example, red on dark skin sometimes looks purple. Okay, so that's why I'm purple today. Um, in dark skin, people get more pigmentation problems. Sometimes this looks brown and pebbly, okay, because of uh, the chronicity. <laughs> psoriasis also, okay, psoriasis, you tend to see salmon pink patches, okay, this is what it says in textbooks, but in brown skin, it can also look purplish. And sometimes, because black and brown people tend to moisturize a lot more, okay, sometimes with coconut oil, sometimes you don't even see the scaliness of psoriasis. Sometimes it just looks like these um, well demarcated purplish plaques, which can confuse a person who doesn't see it very often. Okay, now I'm just going to go in and blend the edges out with cute, okay, using a nice and Loose, fluffy, morphe 433. This very lightly because we don't want to mess up the brow underneath. It's tickling it. 
And a very important thing in dermatology not to miss are drug rashes. Drug rashes can look very different on brown and black skin. So sometimes in a the patient they turn completely red, okay, and in a white patient you can see that very clearly, but in brown skin it can look anywhere from a bit bluish to purple. Sometimes it's very hard to see it at all, especially in very dark skin thin people. Okay, and when you lose a lot of blood, it's quite anemia, okay, it can look very striking in a white patient, okay, they just look pale. But pallor or paleness looks very different in a black or brown patient. Sometimes you can, it looks a bit grey and you really need to train your eye to be able to look at this and a thorough examination, not just by looking at the patient but looking at things like the mucous membranes or the palms and soles, is required to make a good diagnosis of anemia. I'm just going to use the same brush I did before, I'm just going to lightly contour the nose. Okay, and with a smaller pencil brush, I'm going to use the colour Pup Smurf, the darkest one. Okay, just to deepen up the crease there. Okay, and you know, okay, not just skin, but even hair, okay? Hair, hair is a huge issue in black and brown people. They face problems that white people never even encounter in their whole lives, mainly because their hair is so much dif different texture, okay? The coarseness and the curl in the hair gives them a lot of problems. Not only medically, okay, they have certain conditions which are they're more predisposed to, such as folliculitis and um, ingrown hairs, but also culturally, okay, because it is very real that hair discrimination occurs in the workplace, okay, people with tight braids or dreadlocks are looked, at, looked down upon on, okay, in the workplace. And before this year, it was quite easy to get fired for having black or brown hair. Okay, the Crown Act, which was passed in several states in America, is actually addressing this. So it, this allows employers from firing people because of the texture of their hair. Can you imagine 2020 and we have to talk about that? And there is this very, very good cartoon about black hair, which won an Oscar last year. I'll include the link down below. Okay, so I'm just deepening up the outer corner with the purple as well. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut the crease with the uh, remaining bits of um, cream that I have here. Okay, I'm gonna set that with sugar pill taco just to brighten it up a bit. Okay, I'm gonna throw on a liner off camera, I'll be right back. Alright, the liner is on and I've put in my nostrils as well. Wouldn't be a wonder snatch look without the nostrils painted in. Okay, and now blush. Um, very, I guess blush would be just a very pink blush on the face. It's a very dense brush, so you just keep it very concentrated. Right there, okay, I'm using party drip. Okay, I'm just going to. Very concentrated pink right now. And now going back in with my sugar peel taco. I'm just going to make sure this part stays nice and highlighted. Okay, lips. What color lips shall I do? From lips, I'm gonna use this cream again. I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue, okay, to make it a little bit darker purple. Another issue is skin cancer. It's a myth that darker skinned people do not get skin cancer. Okay, and sometimes this myth leads to doctors misdiagnosing skin cancer as something else in darker skin, not doing a thorough check on black and brown people. Okay, black and brown people, it's true, get less melanoma on their skin, but they get more melanoma in places like their hands and feet or under their nails. Okay, and to tell uh, darker skinned individuals that they don't need sunscreen is also a fallacy. Everybody needs sunscreen. Okay, as we age, not only does it protect us from skin cancer, but also it protects us from aging. And in white people, who tend to wrinkle a lot more, uh, you know, the, the whole ad adage that black don't crack and Asians don't raisin, <laughs> um, we, uh, we get a lot less wrinkles, but we get more pigmentation. So the pigmentation is a big issue in skin of color. And some treatments for uh, things like acne scarring or lasers and stuff like that tend to leave more hyperpigmentation in people of colour than white people. So that's something that um, doctors also need to be very, very aware of. Okay, if not, you, 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 end, you end up with a patient with very nasty pigmentation uh, for, from a cosmetic procedure. I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of white now. Clean it up a little bit. I'm going to go back in with Vibes just to contour 
and darken up this a little bit. This helps to set the cream also. Okay, we're almost done. So Juno Birch also has very, very iconic shiny bits on her face. Okay, and I'm, I'll be using my Suva Beauty Water Activated White Liner to draw on these shiny bits on my face. You know, the high points of the face. Oh, it's running. <laughs> Shit. Okay, I'll let it dry. Is it hidden enough? These water activated liners are tricky, okay? You need to make sure that they're the right consistency. Okay, I think I'm done. I think I'm, do I'm just gonna throw on a lash now. Okay, and I'll be back with the finished look and a wrap up. See you in a bit. And this is the finished look. Juno Birch Housewife meets Sandy from Greece. Tell me about it, stud. <laughs> and I even got my red gloves with the nails. Very Juno Birch and where's my... <sighs> And here my, and of course the glasses, very Juno Birch. Take me to your leader, haha. -ha. <laughs> All right, so I think in summary, we cannot be race blind, okay? We are not color blind people. We have to be race and color aware. We have to be aware of the differences, both biologic and structural, that people of color face. And now we do have more sessions for skin of colour at dermatology conventions and we do have textbooks for skin of colour, for black skin, for Asian skin but this still is a form of segregation, alright? The, the white dermatologists and doctors who would never see a black patient will never ever see any of this. So all this information must be integrated into medical school teaching and into everyday life. Dermatology and medicine have not served black people well and we do need to be aware that brown skin matters, black lives matter. Alright, so if you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring that post notifications bell, alright? You get notified every time I upload one of these videos. I might be uploading a little bit, little bit less and less frequently because, um, because work is piling up, alright? So if you want to be notified every time I upload this video, please ring that post notifications bell. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Bye! Forget to watch my other videos. I did one on how black drag queens are systemically oppressed, and I did one on Black Lives Matter, black owned beauty brands. See ya.